Welcome back to Distant Signal and another video. This is the 39th entry into the 90 day vlog marathon for Changelings in the run up to the crowdfunding. Uh, before we get started, if you like what I do here, please hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments below what you want to see out of this process of keeping a diary for Changelings. There hasn't been much movement in the pre-production process this week so far, but I did have a idea for the world of the tear. I don't know if any of you know of this little small region that used to exist in Hong Kong called Kowloon. It is a city that encompasses four blocks and in that small, tiny area, housed about 35 to 50,000 people, apparently. Most of them sort of outside the system of law, uh, mostly organized and run uh, on its own. It's sort of an odd anarchist triumph of self-organization, but also a really strange place full of uh, the triads, the, the mob uh, from China and Hong Kong. And I thought it would be fun if, um, as the terror approached, Earth as this thing that approaches Earth that creates the first changeling. It also at some point a city either either Kowloon itself, like some version of it, because Kowloon was destroyed, I believe, in 1993 or 94, somewhere around there. And I've got this great book about the the city itself. It's called it's known as the Walled City, and it's such a fascinating example of human self organization, um, human ingenuity, and really people fighting against all odds to keep their little their little piece of, I don't want to say heaven, because Kowloon is a very dark and dingy place, but something that was their own. It was this place that was built. Uh, you know, let me get the book. Hold on. This book is called uh, The City of Darkness by uh, Greg Gerard. It is a compendium. It's a sort of journal of his time spent documenting uh, the city of Kowloon, and what was really cool about this city, you know, like I said before, it sort of existed outside the system of laws there in Hong Kong because it used to be a Chinese base that was stuck in a UK territory, and it sort of fell into this netherworld of law, um, and so there was no authority to appeal to when it came to, say, building stuff or starting a business or how you were going to dispose of trash, uh, and how you get your water. I mean, a lot of this is all totally ad hoc. When you had to build something there, you just kind of did it yourself. So there's no building codes, no building standards. They kind of just did it all themselves. And there was a lot of danger in this. Uh, there were sections of the, of the walled city that did collapse at some point, and it was pretty dangerous, but it was still really cool. Yeah, so this is sort of what Kowloon looks like on the inside. This is what it looks like. Look at this craziness. Oh, can you see this? So look at that. That's what it looked like all, pretty much everywhere. It's dark. Rats nest cable infested place uh, that was just kind of dirty, but really fascinating. You had restaurants, dentists' office. You had anything that you needed. Pretty much, you could get there. Doctors, uh, herbalists, whatever. And it served as the inspiration for a lot of really cool anime, like Ghost in the Shell uh, comes to mind. I think um, also Blade Runner is inspired by the city of Kowloon. I'm pretty sure the design of it and a bunch of other anime and sci-fi movies. It's just a very famous city. Aesthetically, it's just very interesting. So I thought it would be really cool if, because the city was destroyed in 1993 by the authorities, if something like it appeared in America or somewhere else. It doesn't really matter, but I, I was thinking it'd be neat if it was like in Los Angeles, so it's somehow where Dodger Stadium is, is displaced by Kowloon or some version of it, because it, it might be some parallel universe. I don't know, but it just sort of appears there. And I, th I thought it'd be really cool to sort of inject this um, pockmark on the city. Uh, and I say that lovingly, because I, I think Kowloon's a really great story. I would love to have visited it back in the day when it was still around. But it wasn't a pretty sight. Um, I mean, aesthetically, this is what Kowloon looked like on the outside. I mean, it kind of looks like it kind of looks like a bunch of a cargo containers sort of stacked on top of each other, which is really interesting. I mean, look at that. That's the whole thing built by hand by themselves. It's something that you don't see in Los Angeles. It's just not a feature. And so, for it to appear would create a very bizarre sensation. Like you'd see this and it'd be very, I don't know, it would hint at a great mystery and also danger because the world is changing so arbitrarily that it would just create a very odd tone to the piece, sort of like the tear hanging in the sky. So this city that appears uh, hangs or sits like a, a pockmark or a scar on the landscape, something that is unplanned, 
uh, something that looks aesthetically just very um, ad hoc, I guess is the best word I could come up with for it, but very unplanned, very, very ugly, uh, not a lot of coordination, very uh, piecemeal. Um, just, I, I, I want to find better adjectives to describe Kowloon because it's it's simultaneously inviting. Like I want, I wish I could go back in time and go there because it's so interesting. I'm sure it would. The smells would be very strange. When I'm creating a world, I wish I had to think of ways to make what looks familiar feel very strange. And this is one cool way of doing it. And it would give me an opportunity to explore Kowloon uh, without a, a, actually ever having to go back in time or to Hong Kong if I could have gone there in the first place. I think I was only how old was I? I think I was 11 when it was destroyed. So. Unfortunately, anyways, it's a city that's fascinated me for a long time. I highly recommend this book if you can afford it. I had to save up for it. It was a hundred bucks um, And I'm already ruining it. It's a historical book. It's a photo journal. It's got floor plans It's got the history of where the fort comes from. This book is incredible. It's worth every penny I've only maybe read about 10% of it because it's I don't know, I just kind of like looking at the pictures more than anything, but I am determined to actually read this whole thing. I'm trying to find new imagery to inject into sci-fi. I really like the Netflix film Bright and how it sort of melded fantasy world with modern day cop drama, but aesthetically it was also really interesting. I thought, I think it'd be really cool to inject a kind of aesthetics into the tear and into changelings uh, that sort of involves things that are unwanted or undesired. And that being a theme of it, uh, like the tear itself is definitely unwanted and undesired. And uh, I think that uh, seeing these weird displacements or weird uh, changes in reality, like a city appearing out of nowhere. It's an aesthetic you see in a lot of Asian cinema because it's so famous in the region. But it's, but it's something I would like to see more of in Los Angeles and uh, in, in, in the West. I think it'd be cool to, to take these aesthetics to sort of... Um, futuristic sci-fi Armageddon apocalyptic feel and just put it in this like this very concentrated spot and to mirror what's going on in the sky with the tear is the city that appears out of nowhere. I think that, that would be really interesting. And so anyways, that's that's sort of what I've been thinking about lately is how to take take the tear and make it more interesting and and change the aesthetic so it so that Los Angeles looks fresh and new every time you see it in the world. And because, uh, you know, because when I think of this movie, I always think of or, or this whole series, I always think of Los Angeles first because that's where Changelings takes place. I, I always want to make movies in L.A. and I want to make Changelings and feature California. And although I'm looking at Fraser Park, it is within, you know, you could ha you could have you could establish that it's Calif very clearly California and it's near Los Angeles. So anyways, I, I like things being in Los Angeles or just adjacent to. I love the city and I want to feature California more. Uh, and I want to feature locations that are actually the locations. And I think this would make a really great addition, the, the, the Los Angeles version of Kowloon. And um, check out this book. I'll put a link in the description below. And I'll put a link to a couple little documentaries that I found on Kowloon as well. It's fascinating. Um, one of my favorite action films, Bloodsport, uh, the finale was shot there. So if you like Van Damme, you like a little JCVD action, um, I highly recommend checking out Bloodsport and the... They shoot in Kowloon a couple times, I believe. There's, I believe there's a, quite a few scenes in that city, and it's just it's worth watching just for that. It's such a cool historical anomaly. I would check it out. It's called The Walled City of Kowloon, and it is fascinating. So, anyways, catch you later, guys. I will see you with a better update tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and support me on Bitbacker. For only $2 a month worth of Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you'll get exclusive content, early access to everything I do, and access to my private Telegram channel, where you can ask me any question you like about the process of making changelings with cryptocurrency. All right, see you there.